This is a 1975 TAC Model 2 6 channel audio mixer. This model was set to pair with the TAC A3340, which is a reel to reel tape machine. So this one right here. This mixer is small in form factor, compact, and it's intended or was intended for the everyday home studio musician. See, TAC at the time was focused on trying to help home studio musicians and get them the necessary equipment to make music. This is not necessarily a rare mixer in 2024. Despite its age, it is quite old, can be found on eBay for a reasonable price. There's even a newer model, the TAC Model 2A, which is identical but instead includes a parametric EQ. I don't know what the EQ sounds like. I've never tried the Model 2A, but I would still pick it over this one just because it does have that EQ and it could be of some use. What makes this specific Model 2 special is the top attachment, which at the time had to be purchased separately. This top attachment is called the TAC MB20 meter bridge. It gives the mixer the ability to monitor levels while also having designated inputs and outputs to route to any external multi-track. I can see how this could be useful when you're bouncing to tape, you wanna make sure your levels are good, and you wanna make sure the mix is good. I've seen a couple pictures online where users were utilizing the meter bridge as a standalone unit. Since the meter bridge has its own power source, you're able to just connect it into the wall and use it that way. VU meters are great for mixing as it gives you a better representation of the overall volume over time. Unlike our digital audio workstations that measure and deep BFS, which is specifically meant to measure peak values. Measuring the volume units can allow for a much more accurate representation of your mix. That is why I don't know if you guys have noticed a lot of pro studios and even outboard gear that you can find still contain some sort of VU meters. Sure, in the pro studios, they might be integrated in the console, but with outboard gear, it's integrated within itself to measure that overall volume over time. There's actually a couple VU plugins that you can purchase. I know Waves has one. There's also a company called Hayakumo, which created a small VU meter. Uh, I believe it's called the Ferreno. I don't know the price on it, but it's literally like an outboard piece of equipment that you can connect to so you can measure and monitor your mixes. I think, you know, either or is a great option for anyone that's trying to get a better sounding mix. Definitely try using a VU meter. This TAC Model 2 has six input channels with each channel strip giving you the option for mic attenuation, mic or line. The mic inputs on the rear are quarter inch jacks, while the line inputs are RCA ports. Each channel strip does include a high pass, low pass filter, which can be useful for recording. Unfortunately, that's the difference between this Model 2 and the Model 2A. This Model 2 has fixed high pass filters and fixed low pass filters. The high pass filter cuts everything under 100 hertz or 200 hertz. You have the option between the two. And the low pass filter cuts everything under 5,000 hertz or 10,000 hertz. It's just weird that they picked those two, uh, sorry, well, those four frequency spots and they just made it very specific to those. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's just they had a lot of noise in that in those areas back in the day. Now, one more thing that's within the channel strip is that it does have the monitor switches as well. These switches only work if you have the MB20 attachment as they route the signal to the VU meters so you know exactly what your levels are. I'm sure you can route individual sounds to other gear and kind of set it up that way as well, but I see the most benefit having this MB20 meter bridge to kind of measure and monitor your levels. Within the channel strip, you also get a panning pot, of course, and a fader. Something that's different about this mixer is that it's labeled A through F and includes a master fader. And that's about it. I mean, what's interesting is that it does have options for sending sounds like auxiliary and things like that on the rear output, I believe. But I don't see anything here where that can really offer that uh, functionality. I mean, maybe I just don't know how to use it. That's probably what it is, but I just find it interesting. And then another thing is that most mixers will label one through 12 or one through 16, one through 24. So it's interesting that they went with the, using the alphabet for this specific mixer. Not really sure why, maybe they're just trying something new. Um, but yeah, I find that kind of interesting. Now, I guess, I guess one of the things that we could talk about is why would anyone want to buy an old vintage audio mixer, whether this one or just some, or just a mixer that you happen to find online on the internet. Now, I'm not trying to disregard my impulses because the majority of time when I see something that catches my eye online, I have bad habits and impulse buy and reach out to that person. But 
The reality is, I think the biggest reason to why I purchased this mixer is I wanted the opportunity to add to my signal processing. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware, that's why you hear a lot of people use certain specific outboard gears, the ULAs, the LA2s, and these compressors, and Poltec EQs, and such and such. So um, in some cases, some of these mixers have a little bit more, what's the word, characteristic, I guess you can say. That's mainly what I was drawn to. I wanted to see if, if this mixer can add a little bit of flavor to any of the sounds that I run through it. Um, and, and in a lot of cases, like you buy plugins and they end up being almost just as much as what you would pay for like a physical piece of outboard gear. So if, I kind of like to look at it that way as well. I mean, plugins are great. They're phenomenal. They're convenient. They're easy to use. They're easy to integrate. But sometimes, you know, you might want some outboard equipment that you can run sounds through because I mean, it just kind of it's just a, a part of the process. It just makes it a little bit more fun, more interactive than just kind of clicking your mouse and such. Um, so yeah, that's that would be you know my reasoning. Don't listen to me though. Now I will say that this particular TIAC Model 2 is very noisy, and honestly, I don't think that's a great thing. When you're looking for a mixer, you should look for something that can add texture and not really add noise. I know that with a lot of these vintage, uh, old, you know, electronic devices, mixers, pro audio, pro consumer, whatever it's called, um, they're not really that great a lot of the times they have leaking capacitors that really kind of create a lot of noise they generate a lot of noise um or just naturally just the way that the that the machine was built back in the day just over time the, i mean we have to remember that these things a lot of the times were built in the 70s the 60s um 80s is still like kind of that integration where things were getting a little bit better in terms of technology but a lot of this older equipment is from like you know 60s 70s um the workmanship and just how long it's been around the normal wear and tear you know these things i don't think they were built to last forever right and i mean i think uh, the biggest reason too is you'll always hear people say analog is better than digital and there are frequency charts that show digital clipping compared to analog clipping and how analog clipping is always a lot more smoother compared to digital and how digital sounds bad because it distorts and such and such. Um, I think it's just really preference and, you know, digital, the benefit of it is just, you know, the flexibility it offers. Uh, the ability that you're able to kind of manipulate and just kind of there's a lot of tools out there that you can utilize in the digital aspect of it and honestly it's i don't really see it as analog versus digital i see it as an integration of both i see both of them as tools and they should be both used you know accordingly and such um what i what i did want to do next is i just wanted to play you guys a clip um, I turned up the volume all the way so you can hear the noise floor of this TIAC Model 2 so you can hear the noise that I'm talking about. Um, that way you get an idea of how noisy it is. Obviously when you have a lot of instrumentation and sounds running through it, it might not, you might not be able to hear it, but I think the downside is that um, when you're adding to more frequencies than you should want to, it kind of maybe makes more frequencies kind of cancel out or or have a lot of phase issues or or have an you know like a specific increase be you know a couple decibels higher than it actually would be if that noise wasn't there um so it does make a difference i mean you know we make like what i mean personally i make like lo-fi um you know hip-hop you know mainly i make more like hip-hop instrumentals like 90s era lo-fi inspired just kind of more gritty dirty sounding stuff so you would think the noise wouldn't bother me but i honestly like to start with a clean slate and add my own noise um and not really have noise you know generated from you know because i don't think it's good sounding noise if that makes sense but let me play this clip so you guys can check it out so you guys can just get a brief idea of what it sounds like uh, with no audio playing just you know just the noise Now the next thing I want to show or the next thing I want to talk about is I'm going to play a beat. Um, this is a beat that I made on Koala Sampler on my tablet, just something that I put together really quick. 
Um, Koala Sampler is re really fun for those of you that don't know. I'm sure most of you are aware, but it is an application that um, pretty much has everything you need. And for anyone that is starting out, I think it's a good starting point just because it offers more than enough features. Um, so I'm going to play this beat. What I'll do is I'll play, you know, straight from Koala Sampler. I'll kind of import it. Um, so you can listen to the audio of that. And then the next clip will we'll show you what it sounds like running through the mixer. I mean, let me know if you guys hear any differences, if it sounds the same, if it sounds worse, if it does sound better, let me know. Keep in mind that it is going through the mic of my camera. So um, that might have a little bit of play in terms of how it sounds as well. But regardless, uh, just, you know, let me know which one you guys think sounds good or sounds best. Check it out. thing were you guys able to hear any differences let me know in the comment section below so thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section below and i'll see you guys on the next one peace